outside lobby. Mr. David Bannister. Good evening, everybody. This was my thoughts on the day of war had been declared. It was bedtime in our house when my two sisters and I were told we were to be evacuated. You'll have to go, my parents said. Now eat your supper and go to bed. The war had started that awful day, and tomorrow we'd be sent away. My two sisters seemed unaware of the trauma we were about to bear. Sent to school the next day and packed on buses, we're on our way. To Salby Town we had to go. To me, this was a terrible blow. We stood like cattle in this large abbey, and picked by locals we could not savvy. My man made up, I would not stay, I'll bide my time, I'll run away. I kept my promise I made that day, and two years later, I was on my way. I'd watched the glow of the blitz. Was my family dead? Was my home in bits? All was ablaze, hundreds dead, but on the reports, nothing was said. I walked for miles along this railway track, no intention of turning back. Two days later, I was home. Our windows blown out, but my life was reborn. But then came a shock I could not believe. You'll have to go back, I was told. Well, I'm not going back, my statement was bold. Well, a couple of days later, I was taken back, but I knew the route of this railway track. Two months later, I was home once again. My parents now thought, was this all in vain? For the third time I ran away, and my parents decided that I could stay back home where I belong. All of my family at 12 survived the war. They were the lucky ones. I was born in 1931. Thank you. I call this memories of yesteryear. Gone are the days of skipping ropes, playing blocks sliding down slopes. Those days now I've gone. Money, well, we never had none. Have the kids now lost the art of having fun? Why well, do some of them now carry a gun? There's no television for kids to see. This would have been a dream to people like me. Our idea of fun was to climb a tree, tie in a rope, a swim was for free. We'd swim in the drain near where we live. Money for baths, our parents. They could not get. Families were poor in those far off days, but we were still happy in many ways. We, we'd stood the bombings during the war. Few people had cars or even a phone. And with food on the ration, we grew a lot of our own. But let us not grumble. Those days have now passed. I can't say I'm sorry that they did not last. We are all better off, so we've been told by our politicians, their statements are bold. Well, our, are our kids happier than we used to be, than the fun that we had, which we made for free? I often wonder how this could ever be. Thank you. This is a true poem of an actual account of one of the experiences I had towards the latter part of the war, which I decided to put into verse. I called it A Night Never to Forget. It was the 17th of March 1945. Do you want to go to the cinema, my elder brother said. You're far too young to be out late, my mum said. I'm afraid that you will be in bed. I'll look after him, was my brother's reply. We're not ready to die. We had only just had our tea, and going to the cinema was a big treat for me. But I had other ideas about all of this. Going to the cinema was still good to miss. Allowed to play out, this was to be my day. I met my brother as he went on his way. To the Savoy cinema we did go. The film was started, we were told, as this night of tragedy began to unfold. 
The day was the 17th of March. It was night. As we left the cinema, an enemy plane was in flight. It came on Olness Road, firing bullets at us all. So we crouched in a doorway as we saw people fall. Many were injured, several dead. And later I thought I should have been in bed. We were rushed in the shelter by the wardens and police. Later we got to them where we had some peace. My, my parents were furious with my brother and me. I told you not to take him after we had our tea. I'm sorry I told him, but he didn't know. I told him that you said it was all right to go. You're lucky to be here, you both could have died. And David, that's your fault, because you had lied. There was nothing in the papers about this tragic event. And when I mentioned this night, no one ever seemed to know. And I mentioned this at the Freedom Hall War Show. But there was one woman who did know, for her brother was one of the men who died that night. He was unlucky, for it was a terrible sight. Twelve people killed, twenty-two injured. And this is a, a true poem dedicated to those who died. Thank you.